On the Ethereum forums, Bluefin asks how he can use the, the splitter contract. Uh, he tries to create the, the contract using the LLL example, but he cannot figure out how to, uh, how to use it further. So let's, let, let's see if we can uh, reproduce this. So first of all, we take the, the contract from the, from the wiki. We do need to modify it a little bit because what, the, what it does first when you initialize it, it registers itself um, to, the, to the name rec contract. But on the, cor on the current uh, PUC5 DevNet, the, the name rec is a different value than this one. So that's why we need to modify it. So let's, let's first copy it. Um, I'm copying it into, um, into Vim and I need to change it with the current version of the name rec. So we'll take a look at the, um, the current Ethereum client, LS0, and name rec is this 11D value. So I double clicked it to, to copy and I replace it. So with this, uh, this contract should be okay. Let's let's submit it to the to the network and see if we can uh, create it. So I, I select it, I copy it to my clipboard, I go to LS0, and I want to do a new transaction to create the, the, the contract. Um, currently I'm connected to the network. I paste the LLL data in the in the data in the data field, and you see it actually gets compiled. So here we have the bytecode for the init and for the body itself. And to create this contract, only thing that we need to do, we need to be sure that we're not sending it to any context. We just leave the, the recipient, the two value, we leave it empty. Uh, there's no amount associated and the guess, we just leave it as default. So here I click on execute and now it should show up under pending. Okay, here we go. So. It still needs to be mined. Let me enable mining on my client to ensure that it gets uh, gets picked up. And once that is done, it should be there under the location 66C24, etc. Okay, the transaction was uh, processed and the contract should be created. So there's no longer a pending transaction here. And now if we look at contracts, it should be there. Um, so here is the splitter one, 66C24. That was the same address that we saw in the printing transaction. And it has successfully registered itself under the name splitter. So now to try it out. So what is the intent of this, of this contract? Um, you can call it with a list of uh, addresses and the amount that you're sending to it should be divided by the amount of recipients and everybody should get their share as a payout. So let's give that a try. So to really test this, I'll just be creating a couple, a couple more accounts uh, for myself. Otherwise I cannot test it, uh, test it locally. So this is my main account, the 328F, and I'll just create a couple new ones, new address. So here's the 2141 address and also another one. Um, let's try it out. So I want to do a transaction. I no longer need uh, to, to send the, the contract data. I just need to specify the splitter contract from the pull down menu. It should be here somewhere. There we go. So I want to send it six ether and I want to divide it to both of these accounts. So what I do, I copy the first recipient and then I copy the next recipient. So with this, I would expect once this transaction comes through, um, the first one to get three ether and the second one also to get three ether. So let's execute this. So the transaction was mined and we were expected the payout to be split, but that didn't seem to be the case. So let's figure out what we did wrong here. So after trying this for a little bit, we noticed that the, the contract doesn't actually work. So probably there's some, some bug in it. So what I suspect is there's a offset issue or something with the length of the arguments. So when we specify this address uh, on, the, on the data element, we notice it gets, uh, well, compiled, let's say, to this, to this value. But there are these leading zeros. 
So in the contract it said it was 20 uh, bytes long, but I think it's actually 32 bytes long. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 times 8 is 32. Um, and I think this is a, a little bit of a conversion issue because the hexadecimal value of uh, 20 is 32 in decimal. So I think that's the problem in the contract. So if we go back to the contract, uh, we need to change it. So where it says 20, we need to change it with 32. Or what we could also have done, we could have used 0x20 to identify that it was a hexadecimal value. But just let's use uh, 32 in this case. So unfortunately, now we have ruined the name splitter with this broken contract. So we need to create a new contract and uh, re register it under another name. So let's let's change it. So we just call it splitter2. And now it is nine characters long. So we need to change the eight in a nine. So with this change, let's, let's try it again. So I copy it. I go to LF0. I paste it as data and I need to empty out the recipients to identify that we want to create a new contract. So we have splitter2. No ether need to be sent and now we can execute. So let's see for pending transactions. Here is our creation. So the contract will be under 9412. Okay, there it got mined. Let's see if it is in the in the list of contracts. So there should be splitter two with a value nine four uh, one two. Yeah, that's correct. So now we can try it again. So we go back to the transact screen. We can remove all the data. Um, we type the name splitter two and uh, verify that it's to the right one nine four one two. Okay, and let's try again with uh, six ether to be sent to. This account and to my EF account. So again, we're going to execute it and let's see if they both get three ether assigned. So we have the pending transaction, which we need to wait to uh, until it gets mined. So actually, I think the 0x prefix is not required, but I find it a bit more identifiable to, to show that we're using hexadecimal value instead of a decimal value or a string. And the reason we have some finis on my other contract, I guess it's probably due to some, some of the mining fees that I've been receiving and had it accidentally selected. So it would receive, it would be used as Coinbase. I'm not, not quite sure. It might be a side effect of the bug that we just noticed with the splitter contract. Okay, come on, get mined. We are only connected to one peer at the moment, so that might explain why it is a bit slower than usual to mine. Okay, it appears uh, the transaction got mined. Let's see. There we go. We got three ether at the first contract that we specified and another three ether on the other one. So to recap, um, the confusion that um, Bluefin had in his post, it's not that uh, it's quite understandable. I mean, there are a couple bugs in the contract. So first of all, probably the the address of the name rack was different. So that needed to be modified. And there were these offset issues where given was uh, confusing decimal and hexadecimal value. So we had to change the 20 into 32 because of the, the width of an address that is, uh, the width of these given addresses are 32 bytes long. So thanks for your question, Bluefin. And, um, Let's hope with this information you get it working.